on KOCE. You're watching KOCE, your Orange County, your PBS. Elephants, the largest creatures that walk on Earth. Vast, ancient looking animals whose lives pass through many adventures. In Africa, the daring kidnap of a young calf calls for action from her family. Thousands of miles away, an Asian adolescent dices with death. This is a story of two elephant families on their journey from cradle to grave. This is our African elephant family. They roam the plains of East Africa, a wild herd of 18 members. The family range in age from year-old calves to mature females of nearly 50. As the day fades, the older, larger females close ranks to protect the young against the hunters of the African night the ever-hungry lions and wild dogs. Last in line is the head of the family, a 48-year-old mature female, the matriarch. She's the oldest and most experienced. Her role is to protect the herd. But tonight, it's not danger which is making her restless. After a 22-month pregnancy, she's getting ready to deliver an infant. This is not her first calf. She's an experienced mother. As darkness descends, the herd draws in around her. In an event rarely witnessed by humans, the newborn splashes into the world, a healthy 250 pounds. Any hyenas looking for a meal are out of luck. Taking the first step in life isn't easy. First you have to stand up. But the family are there to help. Her relatives see off the troublesome neighbors. the first day in our African calf's life. Ahead of her is the long journey from infancy to old age, in a lifespan any human might expect. She seems a healthy, lively calf. For the next 10 years or so, she will depend entirely on the support of her mother and the extended family. This hungry youngster doesn't know it yet, but she's lucky. The greater the mother's experience, the greater the chance of survival. In the shadow of her giant mother, the lessons of life begin. Lesson one, finding food and water. It's been a long, hard night. The whole family is hungry and thirsty. The herd move off beneath the splendors of Mount Kilimanjaro in the endless search for sustenance. She's still unsteady on her feet, but fortunately, help is always at hand.
The family follow ancient routes to food and water, passing on maps of memory to yet another generation. And there's excitement in the herd as the new arrival meets everyone. The swamp serves the best breakfast in town, plenty of water to drink and soft, tasty grass. The slightly older calves want to play, but she's still a little young for games. Elephants often use their trunks to comfort or greet members of the family, and the tiny calf is no exception. If all the attention gets too much, she can also hide away underneath her mother. The family's at ease with this infant, but for her four-year-old brother, it was a very different story. He's now fit and strong, but when he was born, the chances of survival seemed remote. Perhaps he had grown too large in the womb. He simply could not straighten his legs. Unable to stand, he could get little food. What saved him was determination and family devotion. Many animals might simply have abandoned such an offspring, but his mother, the matriarch, and his aunt stayed with him, trying to encourage him to his feet. His efforts were an exhausting life or death struggle. But after three days, against all the odds, success. His own incredible willpower and the family's devotion helped the young calf pass the test of a tough babyhood. Now, he's a typical four-year-old male, play fighting with others in the herd. He appears fond of his baby sister, too. When she steps in and breaks up a play fight, he greets her with affection. From the very young to the matriarch, our nomadic herd of elephants experience life today much as they have done for generations. Our family live in Kenya, but elephants are found over much of the African continent. Thousands of miles away, across the Indian Ocean, in Asia, they have some distant relations. Here, elephants inhabit both the subcontinent of India and Southeast Asia, and they lead a rather different lifestyle. The Himalayas, the highest mountains in the world, stand guard over the lands of the Asian elephant. This is our family. They have also had a new arrival. Our Asian calf is just a few weeks old and looks a lot hairier than her African cousins. They live in the shady forests and jungles of southern India, among the monkeys and the deer. They're slightly smaller than their African counterparts, allowing them to move quickly through the trees when they need to. Beneath a more pointed, domed head, their ears are slightly smaller too, and said to be the shape of the map of India. The calf has inherited the typical hunched back of the Asian elephant. She also has a devoted, though smaller, family group just her mother, older brothers, and sisters. There are always more relatives ready to meet for a drink, though for our calf, drinking water requires some schooling. She must learn to suck water into her trunk 
then squirt it into her mouth and swallow at the same time. It may take a year to perfect the technique. Then, there are slippery riverbanks to contend with. But mother is always there to help out. Just like a human baby, the brand new elephant calf can only suckle. In her first year, she will take up to four gallons a day of mother's milk. To keep up, her mother has to eat over 300 pounds of vegetation a day. Weaning won't start until around age two. It's a long childhood with a strangely human timetable. Our African calf is four weeks old now. She's beginning to learn the many lessons which will guide her to adulthood. The first thing is to get the hang of the daily routine. After about four hours sleep, the herd awoke at dawn. They've been moving slowly, feeding and drinking, until coming to rest in the hottest part of the day. A good dust covering will protect them all from both insects and the searing heat of the sun. It's a trick she hasn't learned for herself yet, but there's more than enough to go round before they rest. The nursery is full of sleeping babies, watched over by the adults. A 40-minute snooze, and mother decides it's time to move on. She gently wakes her own calf. A good stretch and twist helps loosen a stiff trunk. The herd follow the matriarch. She knows where the best vegetation grows and the route to locate it. Our young calf is beginning to learn what she can do. There's play fighting, climbing, general running around, Paddling. And falling over. Like a human baby, she's learning about balance and coordination through play. This exploration is done within the safety of the family. They are there to teach by example and to lend a helping trunk. She's storing memories, which will prove vital in adulthood. But she's not yet worldly wise, and her inexperience is about to lead to trouble. Most unrelated elephant families manage to get along. 
but some herds are simply more dominant than others. Our little calf strays too close to another family, and in a rare display of aggression, she's kidnapped. It's unusual, but it does happen. No one is quite sure why. Perhaps it's a way of demonstrating their dominance. She's trapped beneath the giant legs of strangers. The infant's family circle the hostile herd, looking for an escape plan. The strangers are unlikely to let her suckle. Without her mother's milk, she will die. Mother's first rescue attempt is diplomatic. She backs up towards the kidnappers, trying to show she means them no harm. A vicious poke from a tusk signals another course of action. En masse, our family move forward, a fearsome brigade. It's a show of strength which pays off. The calf is returned, lucky to be alive. It's a lesson in family unity and not talking to strangers. In India, the Asian family are also busy in the school of life. It's the dry season. Groups of families gather in the river valleys to enjoy the choicest grass, renew old ties, and perhaps breed. Our calf is now four months old. She is still suckling, but it's time to watch the experts in the use of that great elephant asset, the trunk. It's an incredibly versatile limb with thousands of muscles. Adults show off their trunk skills like baton twirlers leading a parade. Soon the calf will learn to use this very effective tool to feed herself. At the moment, her trunk seems to have come without instructions. She'll also find it useful at bath time. Bathing is an important part of elephant life. It takes place here nearly every day. From about two months old, the young calves seem relaxed in the water. It's an important lesson. Unlike humans, elephants don't have sweat glands, but their wrinkled skin traps water. This makes the river a great place to cool down. You can also enjoy a snack. And have some fun. African family are just as fond of their local pool. But for all elephants, African and Asian, there's something else they like even more. Good old glorious mud. Our little calf enjoys it, and with good reason. The mud protects the skin against the sun and keeps parasites at bay. It's elephant medicine. As the family trek across the open plains, the calf is moving from infancy into childhood. By the time she is one year old, 
she'll grow too big to shelter under her mother. Her brothers are already into the next stage. They are busy finding new ways to face the world. The calf sticks by mother. She's still too young for boisterous games. In childhood, male and female behavior starts to differ. While females begin to care for younger calves, the males spend their time charging. It's the very beginning of establishing who will call the shots when they grow up. They also practice mating with females. This kind of behavior eventually leads them to being sent away from the herd. Males must prepare for independence early in childhood. A four-year-old bull calf from our Asian family has wandered off into the forest. Unfortunately, there are some things he doesn't yet know about. Like this cobra, one of the world's deadliest snakes. The young elephant is in real danger. The venom from the snake bite could kill him. Although he's never met a snake before, he seems to sense the threat. The four-year-old is suddenly a little less bold. He makes a wise decision. Run back to mother with a lesson learned. Even though he's really too old, his mother allows her son a comforting suckle. It may be his last, for she now has a new calf who takes priority with the milk. The young bull has moved up in the hierarchy. He's not the baby of the family anymore. Part of growing up for our African calf is learning the elephant language. The elephant has the largest brain of any land animal, a fantastic memory and exceptional intelligence. Elephants also have an extraordinary ability to communicate. There are rumbles, grunts, groans, dozens of separate calls with quite different meanings. When alarmed or excited, they will trumpet or scream. They use their trunks for greetings, caresses, and to literally sniff out the status of a family member. The reuniting of a temporarily separated family can be a very noisy affair, as the group reaffirm the social bonds between them. There's something strangely familiar about the fact that it's the adolescents, the 8 to 18 year olds, who often seem to make the most commotion. The onset of adolescence brings changes to a young elephant's life. The females are preparing for motherhood by taking turns babysitting the younger calves. This is called aloe mothering. Young calves will often run to their older sisters and cousins if suddenly they need comfort. The young females begin to take some responsibilities, keeping the more boisterous calves under control. Sharing out family duties gives our wise old matriarch a break and a little time 
to feed herself. The adolescent males, though, are not remotely interested in the nursery. They just want to fight. In adolescence, the play fighting of childhood turns into more serious sparring. It's a test of weight and strength as they begin to establish who's in charge. The distinct behavior differences between adolescent males and females affects the whole family. This young female is about 12 years old. Although she's not fully grown, her sexual maturity has awakened the interest of two males in the family about the same age. The matriarch does not approve. She flaps her ears, warning the young fellows to leave their female relative alone. That disapproval works on the younger males, but when a bigger and more determined 14-year-old bull has the same idea, the matriarch can no longer allow him to stay in the herd. She drives this troublesome young male away for good. For him, it's the beginning of adulthood. Cut off from the protection and companionship of his family, he usually spends the first few years close to the herd, but not part of it. It can be a tough transition. Bigger bulls, like this fully grown adult, have already established their place in the world. Now the new bachelor has to find his. For the male adult, size and strength are crucial. Older, bigger elephants get their way without fighting. There's no point in taking them on. But the younger generation battle it out. They battle because one day they will want to win females for mating. It's a long-term goal. It may take 10 years to prove your case. Adulthood is a time of separation for the sexes. The males drift around in different bachelor parties while the females stay in the family herd. The two distinct groups only occasionally getting together. The African rain provides an abundant food and water supply. This time of plenty often brings a large gathering of herds to one place. Our family head for a great gathering of the clans, males and females of every generation. It's a vast group which seems to simply enjoy being together. They mix peacefully, some looking for mates. The big bulls confirm their authority, and the younger ones joust among themselves. As head of her family, our wise old matriarch commands respect here. She will spend her time renewing old female acquaintances, and may recognize and remember up to 200 individual elephants. The rain in India 
brought by the monsoon wind, has a very different effect on our Asian elephant family. Rivers flood and feeding can become difficult. Now the experienced members must lead the way into the hills to find food. It's time for young adults to practice their skills. Picking up new grass with the trunk is a refined operation. The better you get at it, the more you get to eat. Asian or African, the trunk can suck up 30 pints of water at a time. It's immensely strong, so ripping off a bit of tasty tree bark presents no problem. The Asian elephant's trunk is slightly more flexible than that of an African. It stretches further. But adult African elephants have sheer size on their side. This is one of the biggest bulls in Africa. He's 50 years old and weighs over six tons. A neighboring giraffe may be taller, but even they can't reach as high as this giant. The choicest leaves at the top of the tree are his and his alone. He dwarfs even our wise old matriarch, herself the largest in our family. With his tusks growing up to 10 feet long, he can be confident. It's unlikely any other male would attempt to challenge him. Our matriarch is not easily intimidated. He may like the look of her lunch, but he's not going to get it. Another tool which an adult needs to learn to use effectively is the tusk. The elephant's vegetarian diet means they sometimes lack certain salts and minerals. The matriarch uses her memory to remember where they are and her tusks to get to them. Tusks are also a great weapon. Both these adult bulls have already lost one in a fight like this but that doesn't mean they can't still do some damage. Of course, tusks also have a peaceful purpose. They're a great place to rest a weary trunk. As they amble across the African plains, the young adults spend their time refining their skills and learning the secrets of survival. They have acute hearing and smell, but they also have one more ability, which until recently humans knew nothing about. It's the elephant's secret weapon. The Asian family is browsing in thick forest. The young mother is uneasy. She can't see or smell him, and yet she knows a tiger is close by. Almost a quarter of elephant calves in some parts of Asia are taken by the great cats.
The mother knew he was there because she received a special message. Another elephant has raised a cry of alarm, which neither a tiger nor a human can hear. The message comes via infrasound, sound pitched too low for us to hear, but which can save an elephant's life. Mother heeds the warning and shepherds her calf out of harm's way. The tiger will never know what alerted his prey. Infrasound isn't just for emergencies. Both Asian and African elephants use it regularly to maintain contact with others several miles away. Learning to understand signals is a critical part of adulthood. This mature bull is sending a very clear message, not through infrasound, but via the sticky stain pouring from his head. It's both a warning and an invitation. He's in the grip of a hormone change called must, an Urdu word meaning intoxicated. It makes him more aggressive in the fight for a mate. The warning is to other males, the invitation to this available female. Unfortunately, another bull, also in the prime of life, has the same idea. The female herd watch and wait. With both bulls in must, this is no sparring match. It's an aggressive battle which could end in death. Fortunately for them both, the slightly weaker bull backs down. Perhaps they once had play fights as youngsters and have remembered who won. The receptive female knows the winning bull will follow her, eager to begin the mating process. He explores his new mate. At 18, she already has one four-year-old calf, but she's ready to reproduce again. A bull who has just won a fight would be a good bet for her. His genes should make excellent offspring. The actual mating looks dramatic, but it's pretty speedy. The whole family seem to cheerlead from the side, trumpeting their approval. After the event, the conquering bull will hang around to ward off any other suitors. It's his only contribution to fatherhood. After a few days, he'll drift away in search of other females or bachelor company. The pregnant female will stay safe within the comfort of her family. In time, our matriarch will once more become a grandmother. Motherhood is a lifetime's occupation for adult females. From sexual maturity, elephants give birth about every four years. They often spend their entire adult lives either pregnant or suckling young calves. This 32-year-old has had four calves. If she stays healthy, she may have four or five more. It's the females who are responsible for raising the next generation but it's a responsibility which they share. For them, family life is about cooperation and vigilance. Lions, while no match for an adult elephant, will happily grab youngsters.
The younger the calf, the more vulnerable it is. This time the lions go hungry. The matriarch and other mothers have kept guard well. The lions are left in no doubt that a fight could end in their being crushed to death. While the females are involved in family life, the males look out only for themselves. For them, life is a competition about passing on the most genes. They will tolerate each other until there's breeding to be done. Bulls continue to grow right into middle age. And it's size which makes a bull a winner. If he's big enough in his lifetime, he may manage to father scores of calves. All of them will be brought up by the females, mothers, aunts, and grandmothers. Like humans, female elephants reach the menopause about the age of 50. It's unusual in the animal kingdom for creatures to carry on living after they've stopped being able to reproduce, but there does seem to be a reason for it. The notion that an elephant never forgets may have some truth in it. Studies show that the elephant's brain is huge, four times that of a human. It has an incredible capacity for storing information. Our matriarch may have had her last calf, but her life experience is still valued. Roots to water holes are passed on, and tricks for surviving when conditions are hard. Since she lives in a protected park, she may survive to the age of 60. Not all elephants are as fortunate. They must compete for space to live, and the main competition is with man. As the human population expands, more land is needed for cattle and crops. Land wants the domain of the elephant. And then there is ivory, the white gold of the elephant's tusk so prized by poachers. While the Asian females have no tusks, in Africa, both sexes are at risk. Even in the parks, safety can't be guaranteed. The bigger the elephant, the bigger the ivory hall. So it's usually the oldest elephants who are gunned down first. It can leave the youngsters in the herd with no one to teach them how to survive. In Asia, the human population is exploding into the forests. For a hungry elephant, this unattended house is very tempting. Why should an elephant appreciate the work that has gone into a field of crops? It just looks like lunch. The people use fire and noise to scare off a lone bull. But he still stops for a snack. Increasingly confined, some elephants have attacked villages. The villagers respond with guns. The battle for space and the lust for ivory make the sight of a wise old Asian bull a rare one. Natural death for an elephant usually comes from malnutrition. As their teeth wear out, they can no longer feed. This 60-year-old is thirsty, but where he once took priority at the water hole, now the old bull can no longer compete with younger blood.
he is unceremoniously shoved aside. It's probably not meant to kill him, but he is weak. The blow is fatal. It's at the grave that elephants once again show what exceptional and social animals they are. The dead are accorded great respect. The elephants seem to remember. They will return time and again to fondle the bones of relatives, stroking the tusks and skulls of those who they once greeted with pleasure in life. They may even try to cover the bones with leaves and mud, or take a memento which they may carry for miles. From cradle to grave, these extraordinary creatures show an intelligence and sensitivity which humans are only just beginning to understand. A gift to us, and a hopeful future for them. Hello, I'm Brenda Berkusik from KOCE, and I'm here at the Seacliff Country Club in Huntington Beach, where we're celebrating innovation and education. Today, we're golfing to benefit KOCE Classroom, and I'm here with Mel Rogers, President and CEO of KOCE TV, and Maureen Zentner, longtime member and supporter of KOCE. Mel, for 30 years, KOCE Classroom has been helping